trust children. Our whole education system is distrust in children. You have to do this, this, and I will check, and if you don't do this. Children, my, my daughter is now almost six, see what she learned outside school. I had my daughter when she was six months old. I downloaded an app for a baby, a rattler, so she made noise and my da daughter was playing a little bit with it. So when I think she was one and a half, I had the iPad in my house and I noticed that she know how to handle it. So I downloaded apps for her, like for example, an app with 12 animals, uh, different animals, a drawing. And if you say cat, she had to push cat. Then you got the noise of a cat and a picture of a cat. And there were four different noises and four different, so. So, and so the animals she knew in, uh, let's say, 10 minutes. Then we did the, uh, like cars or uh, what we did, some the household things. So one week later, she knew all the 72 uh, components. Or she did all kinds of memory games type of thing. Or when she was almost three, she started to be, and that's a very interesting app, Toka Boca Taylor, she started to be designing fashion in a very simple way. But the outcome is incredible. She, was, she made 150 different designs. And I noticed, what I never was aware with my other children, that apparently even a young child is a very creative brain, but we don't know it because it's inside the body what cannot do so much, cannot talk so well, cannot write, cannot explain everything. But now she showed me that she was already very intelligent. Not very intelligent, I think each child could do what my daughter did. And so, and then I also realized, and that's the big problem with all those people who are skeptical about young children, this and that. Um, that's the story of when I was young, I had Elvis Presley and the Beatles. And all the older people were, think that music is terrible. And young people liked it. So a lot of things I hear about young people shouldn't do this and this and this is a generation conflict. So it's not thought about individual research, but it's done by normative thinking. And I know that so well because I saw my daughter, my, my daughter, um, my wife is Cuban. My daughter has many uh, cousins in Cuba for the same age. So when I go to Cuba, I see the difference between my daughter and those children in Cuba who still live in the 50s in many ways. And it's a great life. I mean, uh, and when my daughter is there, she walks with bare feet outside in the street. But I can see that my daughter knows maybe 500, uh, 400 animals, and they know only seven animals, the only animals they see in their surrounding. And everybody also makes a kind of characteristic, uh, ch ch funny story like, if a child is working on iPad, that's the only thing what she's doing. That four, 24 hours of the day, they work on the iPad. Of course not. She plays with normal puppets. She likes to paint on paper. But a part of her creativity and a development is done by a tool that gives her much more satisfaction and also much more challenge than the tools of the past. When I go to the school of my son, I visited it some years ago, and the classroom was exactly the same like uh, 32 years ago. And then I saw my daughter when she was two, working herself with an iPad and doing things and showing me things I never thought that children at that age could do. And then I thought, why should I send my daughter to a school who prepares children still for 1990 instead of for 2030? Because that's the, when she's 20, then that's the year 2030. And then my decision was either she stays home or I try to start a school. And in the Netherlands, that's possible. We have a constitution where if a lot, uh, several parents want to start a school and you are inside specific guidelines, the government has to allow it and even to finance it. So we could start a public school financed by the government uh, with our own goals. And that's what happens. The biggest problem, especially in Germany, but there are many other countries, because the government decided what you have to do in school. And that's decided by old men of 50 years and older who see that the best education is exactly a copy of the education they had 30, 40 years ago. So in that way, they imprisoned the children in their past under the pretense that they prepare them for the future. But there are some people 
who, who, will, who don't want to think in problems, but only want to think in solutions, and who understand if they don't change, that's bad for children, and they want to be good for children. So we see in different countries and different places, the really education heroes who say, this is what I should do for the children, so I do it. And I, my experience is that what a lot of people define as restrictions are mostly restrictions in their minds. And it's a kind of defense line. I want to do it better, but it's impossible. It's not impossible. Because if you really believe in it, you can find a way to do it in a completely other way, still inside guidelines. And mainly, I mean, if you are a parent, why are we accepting in schools, and that's, I, I noticed with many people who told me after they brought this, our, this, his or her child to uh, school, that they said, I have a happy uh, uh, child now at home, he's working, like, and he didn't do that last time, and I always thought that he was to blame. I always thought the last two, three, four years, the problems in school with that child was because he was lazy, not intelligent, or whatever. Now I understand that it that was not he or she, it was the system, and he revolt against the system, what I thought was he, he was to blame. So if you're really correct against for children, and if you really, you really have your heart into education, if you are coming to our school, you understand how wrong the current system is.